Hello my loves, how are you doing? So today I wanted to go really quick over the story of how it started with me and light language because I had a client the other day and was asking me like I think I have light language too, you know, I was doing like an energy uh, healing session and light language came through and um, where's the camera? Is it here or is it there? I can't tell whatever <laughs> so my client said you know what what I hear from you now I feel like I have this too and absolutely sometimes light language like all all it needs in order to be activated in you is exactly like you could be having a, a session with someone who is blasting you with light language <laughs> with transmissions and you could have this as well or it could be that already light language is starting like it's trying to start coming through you mosquito and you need to see it from someone else like in action in order to feel confident doing that does that make sense so what is light language for those who might be asking who might be like Elena good nice with your introduction but what is light language at all so for those who don't know, light language is literally an energetical transmission that is coming through. It's a language that doesn't have um, a, a specific like vocabulary. So the words, the sounds um, come through its frequency, its sound, it's a transmission. This light language, the ability that it has is it interacts with your uh, vibrational like sphere it interacts with your molecular core so to speak and your DNA it acts up on your DNA it unlocks um, codes it activates codes of consciousness within you and two people could be hearing the same light language transmission but that light language transmission could be unlocking different things within each person could be uh yeah having an effect a different effect on each of these people and for some people it might not have any effect because they're not it's not needed for them yet or you know it's it's not for them so light language is something that works very differently on each person. I have had cases where I was doing, let's say, a workshop, like a group workshop, and I brought through light language that was, um, my guides uh, kind of nudged me, made me feel like this is for unlocking like uh, shame, like un unhinging it from, from the soul and like, getting it to go away <laughs> so that was kind of interesting some people said oh my god i felt such a release like at my hips uh, and in the womb space another person started crying they had em emotional purging because they felt that some kind of energy shifted in their heart and maybe that's where they had the blockage maybe that's what was causing them shame so if i'm receiving a transmission that my guides are telling me is uh, aimed at addressing shame uh, yeah the effect is going to be different on each individual and so i always find it very very interesting especially in a group session setting where i see that the same transmission is doing something different to each person and also another time i had it that it was a workshop that i did actually i think in april um it was an, a workshop that i did for um womb healing all right um and i think there was stuff like shame i think sexual shame and stuff like that as well um because also sometimes you know the light language the light code transmissions that are pouring through they work they work a lot like like a download it's a download right i posted a video explaining what um intuitive downloads are so if you're not familiar with the term you can go check my my video it's a short video shorter than most of the videos that i do on here <laughs> so um yeah again different 
different uh, ways that the people received it. You know, it was for womb healing and the other woman was like, I felt like I had a blockage like on my shoulders and I felt like, I felt almost like my spine kind of tingling and then I felt like I had something off of my shoulders. And that could be the way your own nervous system or consciousness uh, uses these pictures or these sensations to n alert you to let you know about like the kind of energy the quality the sta the statement the energetic statement be behind the, the the load the baggage or whatever it is the the, the, the stagnant energy um, so it could be that this person also was experiencing the light language transmission uh, let's say directed to to the womb space but maybe in her experiences the blockages and issues around the womb space and sexual healing maybe it felt like a like a burden that had to do with taking on other people's stuff or you, you never know you would have to dig deep into the history of the person and that's not something that i do often in a group workshop setting when it has to do with light language i just create a circle we do our sound healing i clear cleanse the energy and then i start with the transmissions and if someone like at the end of this circle we have of course like the time to um share some insights a lot of people receive downloads for themselves during the, the light language so um we have you know time to uh, say you know what how we experienced it and a lot of people might actually share you know deeper stuff about their past or how that what they felt how it related to their own personal history but yeah generally that's why you see light language working differently on different people because it all has to do with where you are at and what the light language transmission can do for you based on where you are at at your journey and know this my loves spirit the divine consciousness is never going to come um, forth in a time that is not the right time for you or in a manner that is not the right manner for you so um so often that's why i'm always cautioning people with for example like engineering, like going there and mechanically like causing um, spiritual awakenings or third eye, up, third eye openings or like Kundalini risings. And I'm like, if it was a spontaneous thing, great, but don't go looking for, for these things in a, in a pressured manner. Like I need now to have a Kundalini uh, awakening because everybody else in my group is having one or I hear a lot about it. I want to know what is this chill. It's going to come at the time that is in alignment with the optimal function of you on an emotional, mental, spiritual energetical physical level you don't want to have energy or or doors of consciousness open in a in a manner that it, it blows your mind and you need to spend time in the psychiatric ward i know i have a family in my fa in, i have a family member in my family um lovely lovely young man i suspect this is what happened and he had a he, really his filters got blown up and he had you know he's the people around him couldn't understand what was going on he was saying he, he basically just walked in the middle of the of the big street uh, with the in the traffic and he was stopping the whole traffic and he was saying i am jesus you all need to stop I am Jesus and I need to tell you this like he was literally receiving messages I believe he was receiving Christ consciousness uh, so when he was saying I am Jesus I don't think he meant he thought he was Jesus but he he meant he was receiving Christ consciousness and he was a channel at that moment he had become a vessel for Christ consciousness and most probably he was receiving messages he was channeling energy and just when your nervous system is not ready for that you guys it feels like you're going crazy because you can't 
let's say, same as I would receive a download because my nervous system is ready, because there's been a, like decades preparing me for that. Um, and a lot of people who are doing channeling work, right? It usually happens very organically. We didn't go there and force it. There were a lot of things and a lot of experiences that gradually brought us to the point that we were like, hey, what a minute, what is that? So, um, yeah, if your nervous system is not able to receive these things, um, first of all, you don't know, you can't make sense, so to speak, of, of that download. The energy, you might have also like stagnation blockages, energetical uh, blockages, and the download cannot be integrated. You cannot move to the next step of unpacking the download, verbalizing it, making it be something, uh, you know, that, that can be understood. So you, you have often that you see people just mumbling stuff and you say, what is this mumbo jumbo he's saying or she's saying? And you usually, you know, you get people and you have people being put on medication while all they need, in my opinion, is um, comforting, grounding. You need to grab them and put them in nature, plant their feet on the ground, and first of all, calm them down because they are freaking out probably. They have no idea what's going on to them. All they know is that suddenly they are not themselves anymore. There's been a cracking open of the persona that they were, and now there's these huge chunks of consciousness running through their physical vessel, which is not ready for that. So you have the nervous system being completely fried. So because I've seen this in, in this person in my family, and sometimes I'm thinking to myself, dang, if I was there, because I wasn't, this happened in Greece and I wasn't there, I'm in Germany. So sometimes, so often, uh, I was thinking to myself, if only I could have been there when this happened, if only I knew also, because the family kind of kept it covered up at first, because yeah, they didn't know what was going on, they still don't know what happened, um, and that was their reaction, to just grab the person and, you know, take them to the psychiatric ward and give them medication to keep them, like, uh, calm. Our uh, society has uh, is freaking out very easily when you know when they see people being intense. Uh, so it's like something is wrong with you. We need we need to put you on meds. Mm. I believe a lot of mental what is perceived as mental illness is uh, or or psychotic episodes and stuff like that. I think it's like some type of con consciousness episode that they're having. I know I had something that resembled a lot to a psychotic episode back in 2015 when my spiritual awakening happened and it happened after an energy clearing. It wasn't any type of energy clearing. It wasn't like some Reiki or some... It was karmic uh, clearing in the Akashic records and I did it myself. And back then I went, you know, you get the result, the result that you get when you do this kind of work is related to the intention with which you go in. And back then, I was, I was a little bit of a different person. I had a very punishing attitude and approach. Like, I wanted to clear uh, blockages and stuff, but I was going with a very punishing approach of like, come on, Elena, you have to get in there and really like clear every kind of gunk you you find and uh, <laughs> my teacher had warned us do not clear more than five issues per week and i found it so interesting that i just went in there and because my intention was so strong i kept on pulling and pulling and pulling and clearing and clearing and clearing <laughs> and then in the next days i started i i, I was shot i was shot and <laughs> It, it was insane. So for me, it caused a big ass spiritual awakening that I, d I didn't know what to do with it, quite frankly. Uh, I wasn't ready. Uh, but then maybe I was, because it looks like I overcame it. <laughs> All these years later, I'm here, we're good. And it's been, but since then, I'm trying to say, I, I learned to be more gentle with myself and also with my clients I'm very careful the the way that I'm you know see if you if you 
if you learn, if you have such experiences, you learn a lot about what not to do and about how to handle energy, how to work with energy, how to work with consciousness, uh, so as to not overwhelm the nervous system and the, the person that you are, quite frankly. You know, we all just want to be like, oh, I want to break free from all of these personas because they're inauthentic. We have to stop with this rhetoric. It's like the persona that you are right now is serving you for, for, from where you are at. So if you wanna, you, you, need, you need to be intentional about what it is you wanna clear and why. Is it causing you a problem? Okay, then let's see how we can shift it, uh, clear it, you know? But if it's not causing you any trouble, just don't catch yourself now under the microscope and being like, oh, the way I speak is not 100% authentic um, or the way I chill, chill with, the, with, the, with this notion that we need to do an extreme makeover on ourselves in order to be considered like spiritually awakened and evolved and whatever. You are perfectly fine right as you are. Just if you are thriving, Keep, keep doing what you're doing. If you're not thriving, then let's talk about clearing things and shifting things and all that stuff, okay? So I'm just saying this because, you know, it, I see it's turning into an addiction, this spiritual, like, ascension and evolving, like, evolution and kind of like, yeah, yeah, clear all of my blockages. Honey, if we clear all of your blockages, you're gonna be in the psychiatric ward. You don't want that. We're gonna clear what you are ready for. And that's why I'm saying spirit, at least in my experience and in my work, never brings forth things that are not at the right time for us to address, okay? So I, I, think, I think I just remember, yeah, I think I just remember my own spirit guides started not hiding things from me but kind of separating things like putting things on the side kind of like this one you are ready to address these ones we're just letting you know it's there but we do not touch this yet it's gonna come at its own time and just generally i have you know i love transformation don't get me wrong and it's I love transformation a bit too much sometimes, too much for my own good. Like as I'm saying in the past, I almost lost it. <laughs> so I've learned to be very methodical and very careful and, and gentle with how I work within myself and within others. Um, because I also had that in the past that I was doing at some point so much shadow work on myself that, you know, you just gotta ask yourself at some point, is, is there like do you have something that you are like kind of so so much stuck in this idea of like let me correct everything about myself let me let me resolve all of my issues is that maybe perfectionism just wearing a different mask so just some thoughts here to c consider but back to the light language yeah for me because that was what i wanted to start saying but there you go um, light language came in for me I think in 2021 I was I had spent already like one and a half years sitting by the river because I was recovering from a physical condition and um, I was becoming so in tune with the consciousness of the river that I was sitting uh, near and I noticed like, you know, I would sit there the whole day, like from 10 o'clock in the morning to, I don't know, at some point, like seven in, in the evening, I started feeling just as, as I was sitting here on, 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 on the earth and just looking into the river, I started feeling my, my body rocking like this. And to be honest for me by now, I know when I feel this, when I start feeling my body rocking back and forth or kind of like, in a, in a circle like that I know that I'm now I know it back then I didn't know yet. I know that I'm kind of about to get into a trance like state um, definitely I'm receiving something de definitely what happens next is I start channeling 
So what happened was I started rocking like that and then I just started speaking in a language that I have no idea what that is. <laughs> and it's so interesting because it came language but sang. And I was like, I, I really remember these, these words and the, and, the, and the melodies and stuff. I have incorporated some of these things also in my work as a musician, as a recording artist. So this first phrase come, comes out and I'm like, what is this? And I stopped thinking about it because I realized you're channeling something. So shut up and go back into your <laughs> state of not analyzing it music 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 just just melodies just <laughs> and right now that i started say when i sat now here and i said this phrase here for you already feel it's like a channel it's like i immediately now open the channel inside of me i really feel right now that i should actually just get up and go to my studio and and re record i feel i feel ener energy i feel music coming through um by the way looking into my galactic astrology i have super strong connections to soul groups of origination such as lyra right like star constellations like star seed fam soul, soul families uh lyra is one that is very prominent on me and uh, lyra is coming from the greek lyra which is really this instrument, this harp-like instrument that Apollo, the god, the god of, of music, uh, he would play that instrument. So it's very closely tied to music, to healing through sound, through vibration. I didn't know all these things back then. I had to dive into this. So, so these things start coming through from for me right there, like by the river. And I'm thinking to myself, I don't know what this is, but when I do it, it feels so good, like my whole being is coming alive. I'm not in my body, I'm not in my head, I'm not out of my body. I don't know where I am. It's like I become one with the sound. And so, just a wonderful, wonderful experience. And so I started, considering what can I do with that and then I started researching and I bumped onto something called light language and I was like the description sounds just like what it is that is happening for me and then I went on YouTube and I saw examples I saw people doing that I have to say to this day you know it sounds like light language there are different dialects if that makes sense some people speak it and it sounds very similar to what some other people are doing a lot of light language to me sounds like native native uh, native Amer american or some i don't know um i could be entirely wrong <laughs> um, my light language i haven't found so far someone like let's say on youtube that does light language where i where i heard that and i said yeah yeah that's let's say what my light language also sounds like so i still don't know where my light language could be coming from even when i go and i find lyran light language doesn't sound like what i'm doing not not really um the thing is light language you could be understanding others like when i hear light language from another person i understand it not in the sense that i understand words there's no vocabulary again light language is is a vibrational language it's not you know this word means that no that's not how it works it's a vibrational language be able to understand the meaning Kind of like the energy what i'm receiving and it's so funny because you know sometimes i would click on a on a video and i would be listening to the light language and i would receive it and i would i knew what it was doing and then i would check the title of the video and i had to laugh i had to say okay even if you hadn't said it i know what this is about 
and at the same time it could still also have different effects like i could be receiving that effect that the video of that creator of that light language creator was intended for um but i would also be feeling it also somewhere else because it makes sense right i said already that it could be working it could be it could be helping it could be healing on uh, so many different levels for each person so yeah <laughs> so that's my story with light language that's how i received light language by by the river it just <laughs> came to me at some point and uh, after i kind of saw others doing it and i realized that okay that's that's what i'm doing so it's not whatever there is here that there's merit in that i mean i'm I felt I felt the truth of it and the integrity of it already when when it came to me but that's just how I am I always I'm, I'm slow I take my time I first need to always have looked at something from all areas um, so then I started incorporating it into my healings as always my man is my guinea pig so he was the first one to receive light language transmissions from me and I remember the day I didn't even tell him what I was doing he was he just came to me he was like hey could you please clear my energy and I was like ah that's perfect because I also have a new tool in my toolkit I didn't tell him though so I just started doing my thing and then I, I was wondering if light language would come through and it did and I started not only speaking but also using my hands to direct and I start that's when I started by the way noticing that light language started expanding for me not just words and frequencies and tones but also exactly gestures and using my hands to direct energy or to move and shift energy <laughs> I you know you could say you are Greek of course you would be using your hands right but I <laughs> don't know that was that was very interesting um, and it had a profound effect on, on my man and so I, I thought to myself okay it works so now it's time to try it on more people so then I started trying it here and there always in various sessions when I would do healings I didn't tell people I'm also gonna do light language for you no I went for what I would normally do and if light language came forth because it doesn't come forth for everybody I have to say that um, that's why again I'm saying I don't think that things come forth unless you are ready so uh, I would see always in my in my sessions and when light language came through I was like okay bring it in and the people were always like hey what was that what you did I felt like my my skin was burning when you did that or my whatever I felt like such a shift such a whoosh of energy so I started kind of getting feedback also from the people without having told them anything about it and that to me is kind of like the biggest proof if I may say because you know it's different if I come and I tell you before so I'm gonna do light language and it could feel like this it could feel like that you might be pre you might be having pre-expectations so to speak based on what I told you so for me it was really cool to see it was con very confirming very you know um, that they had all very similar feedback as to what it does to them energetically so then I said okay it's official I'm, I'm putting light language in all of my healings if it comes through right <laughs> but I'm not gonna be keeping it like a like a secret anymore so yeah and I actually started doing music with light language I have a new music album that I'm working on um, I what I do is I literally just click record and I sit there when I feel it like on days like this when I feel like light language is about to come out and it started quite frankly because my older sister was dealing with something physical and my spirit guides uh, brought forth that I need to sit down because I will be receiving light language for my sister's 
healing. And a song came forth that was called A Sister's Love. And I was kind of like, okay, now I recorded it like in real time because, you know, there's no way that I can compose a piece because light language is coming through in the moment. It's not something that I can, you know, maybe I could record it and then try to hear it back and try to learn the, the, the words, what I said there, but always it's so vague, it's so not very possible so this album this music album that's how I'm creating that's how I'm working on it when I feel that there's something to come out I just go I sit down in meditation I press record I record it so that I can put it into the album so yeah like language is finding its way also in my music and I'm trying to see how I reconcile that with my singer songwriter material or whether I should just open a separate project to be putting out my light language uh, music. I need to, I need to see, because you know, my singer songwriter stuff, they're more autobiographical. It's more like, it's more, yeah, more pop music. I don't know if the people would be completely weirded out to just suddenly have me sing in a strange language they can't understand. Um, let's see. <laughs> So, uh, and it's like, you know, it's like language. I cannot, I cannot force it into a metric of, like, I cannot make it a pop song. <laughs> Not really. So, the rest of the sonic landscape uh, is also, like, very flowy and very just, I just put, like, pads and, and beautiful other instruments to frame the light language. But it's not that I can make it into an actual mainstream song, and I think if you can't you can't bring such stuff into the mainstream. You're gonna be tied up and stoned in the middle of the of the square. <laughs> Maybe not, but you know I I don't know if I'm ready to risk that at this point. All right, Yamalo. So this has been my journey with light language. All right, I hope you had fun with this video. I love you all so much and I hope to see you soon again here on Alinsa Alchemy. Subscribe and let me know in the comments if you also have similar experiences with light language or with the other stuff that we also talked about in this video. We talked about spiritual awakenings. We talked about receiving more than you can handle at once. We talked about a lot. So let me know what you think. I love you all very much. Have a good one.